Hallelujah. We've been born again and filled with the Spirit for a purpose. In order to accomplish the divine purposes of God, we need to take heed and keep in step or follow and obey the leading of the Holy Spirit. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you right now. We honor you. We thank you for your people that are here. We thank you for your precious Holy Spirit. Bless and minister to each heart individually and to us collectively by your power. And Lord, we'll give you the praise and the glory shall be yours. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Good, uh, you may grab your Bibles, if you will, and turn to the book of Acts. Oh, I'm sorry, Romans, that is, chapter 8. Have it say amen. amen. All right, let's uh, begin at verse number 14 and then read through 17. The Bible says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Verse 15, Romans, uh, verse 16, and Romans 8. Verse 16 says, The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Father, add a blessing to your word in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Key verse uh, that I want to focus in on is verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Holy Spirit today. Someone say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit's operation in our lives on a very consistent basis and uh, just a little panorama just going back to the Old Testament we see that in creation the Bible says and, and in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was void and without form and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep and so the Spirit of God was instrumental in creation and we go through the Moses and Abraham we see God talking to Abraham we see God talking to Noah begin to speak to Noah about building an ark and he did that and obeyed him and there were eight souls saved uh, Abraham he told him to come out of Ur the land of Ur of the Chaldeans and he obeyed, not exactly knowing where he was going, but he went and obeyed. And then he asked him to offer up his son. He 
offered him up. And we see just God's spirit, God leading and talking to uh, the men of God and the women of God uh, to lead them. And as they obeyed him, then they got tremendous results in God. And the Holy Spirit not only is the agent in creation, but any kind of operation of God today, it is the Holy Spirit that is going to accomplish the work of God through us and for us. And uh, so I want to call you back, to some back and others, to remind us of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit... Uh, we see that the Father, God had a plan and created the heavens and the earth by and through his Son, Jesus Christ, who is the Word of God. And the Word of God, as man, God gave man a commandment. He disobeyed, he failed, brought sin upon the world and death. And But God... The Son's part was to redeem mankind. So he offered up his life's blood, and he, uh, after he finished, the Bible says he sat down on the right hand of God, expecting until his enemies be made his footstool. Then we see him going, but we see him saying that if I do not go, then the Holy Spirit will not come. So as Jesus finished his role of redemption, then we see the Holy Spirit being sent. And on the day of Pentecost, the church was birthed. It was so wonderful how God did that. But we see how Jesus uh, breathed upon them in the latter part of Luke and told them, to receive the Holy Ghost. And, of course, they were to tarry, to wait in Jerusalem and until they were endued with power from on high. And uh, they all had ministries, but they could not really accomplish anything apart from the Lord, right? The Bible says, Jesus says, apart from me, you can do nothing. And um, the Holy Spirit would move upon the prophets in the days of old. God would speak to them, illuminate, uh, bring illumination, bring revelations. But the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is God. Amen. He's not just spirit. He is God. And so the Holy Spirit is to carry out now and but the, the finished part of God's plan of redemption. Jesus the Son redeemed us, and now there are things that has to be appropriated, and the Holy Spirit is to bring us into fullness of all that God intended for us down here. And ultimately, the Holy Spirit, we're going to be caught away to meet the Lord. So we see the Holy Spirit has a very valuable role and um, so Jesus called him the comforter, you know, the spirit of God. He called him <clears throat> the spirit, Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit. And, uh, but the Holy Spirit I want to focus in on today is the one that we are to keep in step with, follow him so that he may accomplish the will of God in our lives, both individually and collectively. Oftentimes we find ourselves doing without acknowledging the Spirit of God, without depending on him. And our results will tell the story, isn't that right? When we have waited on him or when we have not waited on him, when we have obeyed him or when we have not obeyed him, the results will always tell. 
And so we know that we cannot accomplish anything in our individual lives, in our ministries, in our uh, collective lives. The church cannot function effectively apart from the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. So we're going to, uh, we see in the Bible, when the Bible says Jesus was led of the Spirit into the wilderness, right? He was led into the wilderness. And since he was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, he went through his wilderness experience. He went through the temptations bought because of the Holy Spirit. He was led there and he was kept, sustained by the power of God and brought out by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, and then he returned in the power of the Spirit after that he uh, had gone through his experience. You see, when the Holy Spirit leads you and he brings you through it, you're not all beat up. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory into Galilee. And then you see the mighty wonders and the miracles that took place because he uh, went in and came out by the Spirit of God. It was the doing of the Almighty. We also see that uh, the Bible says the heavens was open uh, in, the, in the beginning of his ministry and the Spirit of God uh, uh, came upon him, right, as a dove. This was the initial beginning of his ministry before he was able to do anything. He operated not as the deity, but he operated as the Son of God, a man filled with the Holy Spirit. And so when he operated he, he, uh, and was empowered by the Holy Spirit, then he began his ministry. And I want to say that you and I, we must depend on the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We've been born again and filled with the Spirit for a purpose. In order to accomplish the divine purposes of God, we need to take heed and keep in step or follow and obey the leading of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Through God, we shall do valiantly. Amen. And so we see Jesus accomplishing by his spirit, uh, by the spirit of God, the things uh, that uh, was to be accomplished there. He was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane and uh, having to face the cross. And he prayed fervently. The Bible says the angels came and strengthened him. But God brought him through that and he began uh, um, to give him the strength to go through the, the task of, of giving his life as a ransom. But God depended on the Spirit. Jesus depended on the Holy Spirit for all that he did. And so we go on and we look. Now Romans says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. He also tells us that we've not received a spirit of fear or bondage to be afraid or cowardice, but we've received the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit empowers and emboldens us for whatever we need to do. And sometimes we may feel like Peter before he was empowered by the Spirit. He thought he knew himself. Jesus said, before the cock crows twice, you're going to deny me thrice. And Peter says, not so. It's not going to happen. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Isn't that something? And all the other disciples said the same thing. Oh, no, sir. We, no, 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 no. You know, we love you, Lord. But they, didn't, they weren't empowered by the Spirit. And you see, when that time came and the soldiers came with swords and staves, all of a sudden they realized that we're all human. We're getting out of here, you know. It was too tough for them apart from God. Hallelujah. When we face challenges in this life, we need God, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. God never intended for us to try and go through difficult situations without the Spirit of God. 
So he filled us with the Spirit. Now we must utilize, hallelujah, this wonderful presence and power of God's Spirit in our daily lives. If we are going to accomplish anything for God, I've seen people that want to witness, but they're afraid to witness. But once you get filled with the Holy Spirit, whether you know it or not, when you open your mouth, he'll be there with you. And he will embolden you to speak on his behalf. Hallelujah. And so Jesus says, uh, we're going to look at, the, go on to the book of Acts here. And I want you to follow through, walk, follow through me, uh, with me. And I'm going to sort of walk you through a few scriptures to, to remind us of how important the Spirit of God is. In our lives. We start in, in Acts chapter 1. The Bible says. First of all we see in verse 1. The former three times have I made O Theophilus. Of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Until the day in which he was taken up. After that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. He didn't just choose and make decisions. He chose, but it was through the Holy Ghost that he gave instructions. Are you with me? Look on down to verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. That's what Jesus said. Now look at verse 8. But ye shall receive power... After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. May I submit to you that they would have never accomplished anything had they not had the Spirit of God empowering and emboldening them for the task before them. There is a kingdom of darkness that stands against the kingdom of God. And you and I need to, to be empowered by God if we're going to combat the forces of evil. God made it very clear. He said to his disciples, Hallelujah, you're going to be witnesses, but I want you to wake. Tarry. There in the spirit of Jerusalem until the day of Pentecost. Something is going to happen to you on Pentecost. I want you to wait. Don't get in a hurry. Don't try to do nothing by yourself. I've, I've commissioned you, but you've got to wait until I endue you with power from on high. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible shows us that there they were, 120 of them gathered in the upper room, waiting and praying, waiting and praying. Somebody could have got anxious and said, I can't wait no more. Let's just get on out there and do it. But he said, wait. And all of a sudden on the day of Pentecost, glory to God, something tremendous happened. There came like a rushing mighty wind from heaven, the sound, but it was awesome. And there set upon them like cloven tongues of fire. And hallelujah, and even fill all of them with the Holy Ghost and power. And may I say to you that when God fills you with the Holy Ghost, he's not expecting you to do nothing. He's not expecting you to sit and do nothing. When he fills you with the Holy Ghost, something inside. Inside of you ought to move. Something inside of you ought to want to do something for God. When you've been empowered by the Lord God. Hallelujah. No man can empower us to do the work. But there is a God in heaven that when his spirit rests upon us. Hallelujah. We can do the exploits. For the Bible says through God you shall do valiantly. For he it is that shall tread down our enemies. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Glory to God. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He will accomplish his task. Glory to God. Look on down with me. Uh, verse number 16. The Bible says. Men and brethren. This scripture must needs have been. Fulfilled which the Holy Ghost. By the mouth of David. David didn't just speak. It was Holy Ghost speaking through him. Spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. So he showed him something that he didn't even know about. The Holy Ghost give revelation. Isn't that right? Now go on to chapter 2. He says here, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the place where they were sitting. And there appeared to them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it set upon each of them. 
And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. People were wondering. They thought they were drunk with new wines. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you something. This man called Peter that when the soldiers came with swords and staves, he fled and he ran. And Peter was so afraid for his life. On three occasions, one occasion, they said, the maid looked at him and said, you, you are Galilean. I, you were one. Of, weren't you with that man called Jesus? I, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know the man. He meant well. Look at somebody say, he meant well. Hallelujah. In another occasion, back to back, another situation, he says, you were one of those. And he, he, he was so scared for his life, he just knew they are going to grab him. All he could envision was how they took his leader. And brother and sister, so he was willing to lie. He was willing to curse them. And so he began to curse them. And, and I don't know what he said, but the Bible says he cursed. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. This man that walked with Jesus for three solid years, all of a sudden he cursed and said, I don't know him. Leave me alone, I said. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, it takes the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There are many well wishing, there are many people wanting to do something for God. Um, but I'll tell you, they can't do nothing apart from God. Um, because there are forces out there, they can stop you in your tracks. Um, hallelujah. But when you got Jesus, um, when you got the power of the Holy Ghost, um, hallelujah, you got what it takes. You got the ammunition. Hallelujah. You got the AK-47. You got, you got what it needs. Hallelujah. If you've been baptized um, and when you're led... By the Spirit of God. Look at your neighbors that you can accomplish something. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Verse 14 in chapter Peter. This same Peter. This same Peter that was a coward. This same Peter thought more of his own life. This same Peter all of a sudden when he became emboldened by the Spirit. Stood up. On the day of Pentecost, and people coming from every part of the then known world, they came uh, for the day of Pentecost, and, and there they were, dwellers from all the kind of the, the countries there. And all of a sudden, they said, "These people, they just did," because they heard them speaking in tongues. They said, they're, "They're full of new wine." No, no, he said, "They're drunk." And Peter got up. There's something different about Peter now. He had been empowered by the Spirit. Of, Peter stands up, hallelujah, and says, ye men of Galilee, hallelujah, hallelujah, the, the men are not drunk as you suppose them, but he said, this is that, glory to God, which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, your sons and daughters are going to prophesy upon your young men, they'll see visions, and old men will dream dreams, and I tell you, the man preached so hard until the Bible says, 3,000 souls. Got saved unto the Lord. Somebody say, Holy Ghost can get the job done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost can do things that we just don't know that can happen. Praise God. And then he says, verse 18, all my servants and all my handmaids, I pour out in, uh, in those days of my spirit. And they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. Hallelujah. Because of the Spirit of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then we see in Acts 10, 38, we see here the Bible talking when Peter was preaching. He preached, but before he preached, there he was, went up to wait until supper time or whatever time it was on the housetop. All of a sudden, he fell into a trance and had a vision. And in this vision, he saw three men coming this way or saw three sheets, fall, sheets coming down full of different kind of meats. And it happened three times, and, and he began to think about it. What in the world could that mean? And while he thought on it, the Lord began to speak to him. And, that, and, and the verse, let me see what that verse is. Uh, he said, um, uh, I don't know what verse it is, but uh, he told him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter was saying, not so, Lord. No, 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 no unclean thing is going in my mouth, you know. Chapter 13, verse 13. Thank you. And uh, there came a voice from him, rise, Peter, kill and eat. Peter said, not so, Lord, 
I've never eaten anything that is common or unclean. For I spake unto him again the second time, what God has cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again to heaven. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made an inquiry uh, for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called to ask uh, whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, had lodged there. And while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said to him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing. I have sent them. Now, Peter, if, if the Holy Ghost had not spoken, Peter could have been right there in his prejudice. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He would not have apart from the Holy Ghost. Now, the Holy Ghost break down barriers. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. He's able to do it. So as he spoke to Peter, then Peter obeyed. And then Peter found himself over there, but he found himself preaching under the anointing of the Spirit of God. And in his preaching, he began to uh, say, verse 37, the word, that word I say, you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. It takes the Holy Ghost to accomplish God's purpose. Verse 44 said, while Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Uh, are y'all getting the picture yet? The Holy Ghost will accomplish the task, hallelujah, of the church. God can save souls. God can heal God can deliver by his power. The Holy Spirit is not just a spirit. He's God. He's God. Glory to God. Now as we go on here, I want you to turn to Acts 11. Look at verse 11. And behold, immediately there were three men already come into the house where I was sent, was sent from Caesarea unto me. And the Spirit bade me go with them. Nothing doubting hallelujah hallelujah verse 15 and as I began to speak the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning 